What's happening crew? We're here at the Wanamaker Tulsa Arms Show. We're gonna talk to some interesting people. Stick around. Welcome back, crew. We're with uh, Dwayne, our favorite ammo collector again. Gonna talk about some Forster Forager. 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 Basically, shot shells, right? They're shot shot cartridges for your rifle type calibers. Kind of like the same thing that you have today with your modern CCI 22 birdshot, but that's not a new idea, not a new innovation that's been done since back early, early in the cartridge history. Mm -hmm. You can go all the way back to here's early rimfire with a paper cartridge. That's one of the earliest types. It has a paper sabot that held the birdshot inside of it. Here's an example you can actually see the shot. Oh, very cool. That's still an early rimfire. It shows the shot. And that's paper. The, uh, it, it's a heavy paperboard type stuff, and sometimes might have a shellac or something on it to help protect it. Stiffen it up a little bit, protect it. Sure. The companies that started that patented it. The other companies that wanted to use that technology for their cartridges to sell ammunition for people. These, these ammo, these cartridges were used. People would have a rifle. They maybe didn't carry a shotgun with them always. Maybe they couldn't afford a second gun or have a shotgun, they just had a rifle. Right. To hunt small game, birds or whatever, they could use forage loads like these that had bird shot and be a good shot and still collect some small game for eating. Gotcha. Here's another one now that's a change. These had a wood sabot. This was to oh, get yeah. around the paper sabot, the patent on it. They can make and sell these and not pay patent rights, royalty fees. You can see there where it's filled with the shot down in the lead. Right. And then as time went on, they came up with ones like this that they just used a paper wad like a shotgun shell in the top of it to hold the shot instead of the sabot. Smaller load. And this one's interesting that they actually used horsehair real fine for the wad column between the powder and the shot. This has been done in various calibers over time. Oh yeah, there's a couple of different ones here. All the way up to the to the big boys even. Good gravy. <laughs> so pretty much any caliber that they had out there they could do this for. There's a couple of 4570s. You know what's interesting is you can feel it kind of rattle. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit in your fingers. You can often hear them rattle. And those are, what did you say? Oh, 4570. Yep. Wow. Just lack of plastics at the time, I guess, right? Yep. They, <laughs> they did what they Used what they had. Do. Yeah, did what they needed to do. Now the red one here, is there anything? That's a 41 Swiss, but it's had the shot load. I mean, a lot of people know about the 41 Swiss rifle and cartridges already rimfire, some of the first bottleneck. I just didn't know if the red was red for a reason. No. Nope. Just, just because. And to show that how early they went back, they even made pin fires. Oh, wow. They did. And that sucker's tiny. That's holy, a five millimeter pin fire. Holy moly. If I can get the focus there, where we go? Check that little dude out. Not a whole lot of shot in that one, is it? No, sir. <laughs> Here's our early copper case 22 rim fire, and then yeah, this shows the, uh, this shows the shot that's inside there. Now this is the amount of shot in this one. I emptied one of those out. That's what's that's in one of those. Not loads. a lot, folks. I can get the focus to work. <laughs> It's probably not going to. There it went. There we go. Get the folks to work here. So that is the amount of shot in that. Very cool. It's just another fun part of cartridges and interesting history inside of it. And you got to figure that there was probably people kind of playing around with this on their own. Had to be. 
it's like a modern reloader with play with shot shells and other things. Experimental loads, right? And that's a lot how of developments come about. A lot of it probably came that way. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Here's Very one last step. Times it was used for other things. We may have to add gelat to it to see this. This is a 43 Egyptian and it used a square cubic shot set down in there. It has four pieces of the square shot in they there. Are, they're square. Let's see if we can get where you can. Now. There, I can see it. Yes, there we go. Picked up. Notice the square. You know that shot is square. That's interesting. And then that's the companion. Yeah, that's this would just be just a, normal. This is just a normal uh, cartridge right here. There we go. So, yeah. Now, what would they, what would they have used that for? Why would they have switched over to that for a military application? Any uh, idea? Kind of a multi multi ball top deal, but I'm not really sure why they did the square or the cubic shot. Right, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> it's an area I need to read and study they more. Found, they found it worked better for some reason. I yep. guess. That's right. Well, that's really awesome, well, Dwayne. Once again, appreciate uh, it. Good well, stuff. You. And. Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. It's always Bye. fun.